Rhesusaurus Rex, but um, some people know me as Rhes Jenkins Davies, and it just depends. My passport says one thing, but my body says another. Some people would say schizophrenia or bipolar or um, reincarnation. I like that one. Being told I'd never walk, talk, draw, run, ride, uh, do any of those things again, I just said, no, I can't accept that. Hashtag, I can't accept not trying. My disability is what they would call a TBI. TBI means traumatic brain injury. Um, and I suppose to most people, it's kind of a nothingness because you don't understand that it. it's something that's on the inside. It's not something that presents itself on the outside, but you don't have to spend too much time with me to know that my life is different. <laughs> I stutter, I slur my words. My left hand doesn't work very well. My left leg doesn't work with my right leg very well. I have what's called vestibular damage, causes me to lose my equilibrium. Light actually tires me, sitting in front of a computer where I used to earn my trade. 78 hours straight as a crisis engineer. Now, seven, eight minutes and I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I wouldn't make a very good crisis engineer sleeping for a crisis. <laughs> People look at you, they sort of, I don't know, they don't know what to think. So they kind of just stare, and I suppose sometimes I kind of am a bit envious of the person in the wheelchair or the one with the stub or the, the, the something like that. And that's not to say that um, my phantom pain's any more or less than theirs. It's just that when people see them, they understand them and they kind of label or quantify them a bit different, which not to say I'm jealous of, but I've certainly, certainly seen other people's reactions to other people like Lucky Luke, being blind with a cane, he doesn't get hassled quite as often as I do, but then people steal his money. Crazy. People sort of say, oh, but you appear so normal, because of course I do, like a chameleon you try to fit in. Uh, when you are so different in having a brain injury to start with, the biggest um, a grievous loss is that sense of self. And so like all of those things, you try to maybe get that back. And so maybe potentially when people do stare at you and look at you, you know, it is like water off a duck's back because you are trying your best to hide those differences. I yeah, I, I don't I make that assumption. I just, I, I assume that you rock around in crazy shit because you're crazy. <laughs> you and I have been staying friends for a long time. All the charisma and all of the chaos that you can put into a small package would be how I would summarise Reese if you didn't know him as well. He's probably one of the most engaging people that you'll ever meet. And he, he was like that before the incident. So where are you living now then? Um, I, am, I am very, very blessed to say I have a lovely place to stay in a hotel. You found it? Down on Wyndham Street. I he was always an outgoing and very charismatic person. He liked to do things his way, but he was always quite considerate of others, and he's still like that to some degree as well. Always noble with his intent. Hey, cool, we lasted like four hours and we were like best buddies. We basically were like <laughs> from, from that moment on. But I don't remember that. I just kind of know that in the back of my head. Does yeah. that make sense? Like, it's funny, like I bumped into a whole pile of people from uh, early voter days and they tagged me in all these photos and I don't remember them at all. I don't, I don't remember about 20 years of of his life, my life I remember in, in patchy details. I struggle to remember weeks, let alone days or, or months. So that's where the Groundhog Hog Day reference sort of becomes quite true. Prior to Rex coming on board, it was, we were very active. We partied quite a lot and we worked really hard and we partied really hard. Come on, pups. 
I definitely had my reckless sides. I definitely, like all people before the accident, as much as I remember of Reese, he definitely liked to have fun, but he took his responsibilities very seriously. And it's not to say Reese's Stories Rex doesn't take his responsibilities seriously. I'm just not burdened with as many responsibilities. Reese obviously had a life, a mortgage, a job. For me, I was um, riding a mountain bike uh, through a mountain bike track that I'd helped build. Um, it was one of the kickoffs that started the great ride systems for New Zealand, and um, I was about in the top 50 in New Zealand at that point, and I was riding around about three to 400k a week, and I, on the third lap of a training ride, um, was going downhill and a tocha tree fell down and I hit it with my bike, and so, in the process of trying to save my own life, I pulled a carbon fibre bar end off. And of course, the bilateral force through my head was enough to pretty much kill a person. And for some reason, un unbeknownst whether you're an atheist or a religious person, I survived. Where I was a normal person before this, um, I had a house and a mortgage and I had an ability to get credit. These things weigh upon your ability to hold relationships down. They weigh on your ability to keep keep yourself sane. You don't have that central sense of worth anymore, whereas before I was an engineer and I had a place to go, a place to hang my hat, a place to keep my Jordans, a place to make my art, a place to keep my car. I don't like Rhesusaurus Rex. I like Reese. So Reese, I've known for quite some time, and I've told this to him as well, that well, I have challenges with Rhesusaurus Rex, and hence the reason that I use the term Reese and I call him Reese because that's his name for me. Um, Rhesusaurus Rex is the real extreme of the happy-go-lucky, throw their cards and just see where they lie and get, deal with the consequences later. There's no getting around that if you bump into someone and they don't have time for you because you're a homeless artist who smells of homeless people, um, that's definitely very uh, confronting and it definitely hurts. But uh, I couldn't be more proud of myself at the same time, so I suppose you don't take it quite as hard because I'm one of the most famous artists in New Zealand and I'm definitely one of the most famous artists in the world. And if people have a problem with that, that's their problem. You just get past it. You sort of think, well, do you have a chip on your shoulder because I have a disability and that made me famous? Or do you have a disability phobia that you actually have a problem with me because I'm more famous and better than you at art? and I have a disability. And so it'd be easy for me to go through my own life having this huge chip on my own shoulder by responding to this feeling I'm getting from people. Things where you become quite skeptical as a friend, when he tells you news, positive or otherwise, you do have to be quite skeptical with that, how much of it is real and how much of it you take as part of the illness. I think art is something that just uh, manifests in you and you in it. I believe, like Picasso said, art is what you do, art is what you eat, art is who you are. Um, art is the way you dress in the morning. I definitely find that paintings just pop into my mind and I'm compelled to go and buy paints. I often go without food to buy paints. I've been renowned for buying canvases before I'll actually replace clothes. I think one of the things that strikes resonance to me is something that Max Gimlet said to me, which is that um, you're on your own artistic spiritual highway and that basically at various different points in your life there will be a resonance and there will be, if you like, an inner voice that comes out and speaks to you. And I definitely have that voice. It's something that keeps me awake at four or five in the morning and I have to get up, paint pictures, draw the images that come to my mind. Without Reese, there would be no Rhesusaurus Rex. I suppose Rhesusaurus Rex was created as ultimate escapism. Reese was stuck in a, in, a, in a job and a life that was very um, demanding. Often he was working 18 hours a day fixing um, the Southern Cross link or keeping payment gateways going or um, fixing billing systems that weren't working. And so I suppose the ultimate escapism was in the backdrop and some of the original works were definitely created um, as a way of like a hobby, dealing with the consequences of working too much, having too many responsibilities.
I always think Rhesusaurus Rex was there in the back, in the background. Um, um, often some things shed like skins and so um, maybe like oil and water Reese was never meant to be Reese, and Rhesusaurus Rex was always destined to come out of the out of the ashes of a head injury. People often ask me um, why I don't charge for my art, and I suppose it's because um, it's a reflection of the humanity we live in. So I, I suppose that really is why I look at being an artist. Art isn't necessarily about making money. It's not necessarily about earning status. It's not necessarily about doing anything but being a better human and leaving a better humanity for everybody. Like Salvador Dali, I put on a show for what I want to achieve and what I want to show, but at the end of the day, it's all me. How is it possible in Auckland I can be one of the most famous artists in the world, yet I don't have a space in an Auckland art gallery? Isn't that funny? Uh, here I have a piece in Kahorton Place uh, where this was a piece of rubbish. As you can see, it's an ex-poster left on some beautiful tile work. I added the black lines uh, to what was basically rubbish to turn that rubbish into something which is an artistic expression. I don't really like tagging, I like street art. And so to me, this is making something out of nothing, turning that nothing into something. Uh, so it's a lovely piece by me, thanks. I guess my family is everywhere. I, I am one of those kind of funny people where I look at family as being those people that mean something to you and a part of your life. Uh, we used to always call our brothers from other mothers and our sisters from different misters. Um, and that's not any uh, reflection on not loving my own biological family. I love my biological family to bits. They're um, jet predominantly in Auckland. Um, my daughter goes to one of the best schools in New Zealand and has done amazingly well for herself and makes me immensely proud. Um, and has moved on to become a fabulous young adult. So I suppose I've kind of looked at myself as developing my family to be some of the street kids around me and some of the business people I admire and um, some of the artists who I call friends. Phil? Yeah. I am. Sorry to bother you. Oh, never, you'd never bother, you crazy monkey. How are you, brother, anyway? Yeah, what are you up to? This is, um, this is Joe. Joe's one of my good friends. I've uh, known Joe for like, what, a good couple of years now, eh? Yeah. Where did we meet? <laughs> At uh, Kim.com's house. <laughs> True story. So I'm here through a strange series of events. And Joe, what about yourself? Well, for me, it's a choice between having $200 a week to live off for food and clothes and everything or paying for accommodation and being left with $90 a week. So I'm happier living somewhere where I can actually, well, have some privacy instead of the hostel sharing a, bed, a room with 10 other people. Uh, and I've, I've lived in a tent. I understand that's uh, taking personal accountability for your situation. And I admire Joe for doing that because I think he's taking a stock of where he is. Hey, brother, how you doing, man? Good morning, my friend. How are you doing, brother? Are you well? Awesome. Often, if you actually look amongst those of us without jobs, we are a lot happier. We have a lot less problems, but the problems we do have, I suppose, to people with jobs and houses and mortgages and, and normal lives, um, our problems seem so harsh, but you can always find food, you can always find a place to live. It's not actually that drastic uh, when you don't have a job, but I guess people look at you like you're a leper, a modern day leper. <laughs> um, I'd love to have a job, I'd love to go back to being an engineer, I'd love to put some contribution um, uh, towards humanity. You're cheeky. You're cheeky. Oh, I've got a job on Saturday, bro. Yeah, nice, oh, that's cool, man. Boom, awesome, yay. Yeah, getting off the street, getting a job, that's awesome, man. That's like, that's like... Living the life I live, I don't necessarily have. Some of those go, going around to my mum and dad's house for tea. 
possibly because I'm spending those times cuddling homeless kids, appearing in art um, exhibitions, making a difference in other people's lives that, yes, I suppose those are the sacrifices. I, I don't necessarily have so many of those moments, but I definitely have other moments, you know, um, that supersede those moments because I suppose I've chosen to foster some children off the street. Every time I help someone like you um, uh, get, get off the streets, th my world gets slightly lonelier. Who am I going to... I love the, his noble intent. Reese will do anything for an underdog and do everything in his power to help someone that's helpless. Sometimes, though, under this new persona, I think that he loses direction along the way and he'll put other people in front of him and leave himself in a state where then he needs help to the point where, oh, can I borrow some money off you? Why? Oh, because I just gave the rest of mine to this homeless person, but now I can't afford to eat. Anyway, we better, we better jam, skis. But nice to see you, brother. <laughs> yes, I always put myself second. <laughs> yes, that's true. My health goes from um, a state of decline um, from where I was before the head injury, and um, sometimes it's due to head injury, uh, sometimes it's due to poverty. So a simple example is my teeth. I need about ten, eleven thousand dollars worth of dental work done because of the effects of brain injury, uh, either through just generally bad hygiene that's been created by living homeless or bad hygiene that's been created by my brain injury. Whew. That helped. Your ability to, to be human is often reduced by your inability to get over simple, simple little pains, small things where you just can't afford some of the medicines um, that most normal humanity would just think to go to their bathroom cupboard and pull out. I've lived in a whirlwind of places in the last six months, two years, three years, so many places. So many different faces. I don't know if I could put a number on it. Um, I've lived in houses. I've lived homeless. Uh, I lived in an art gallery for 13 months. I've lived in a park, Albert Park. I've lived by a beach. I've lived in a car. Dove my Maya Robinson down uh, by the beach was pretty cool. Uh, now I'm at the Ibis. It's under um, Rhesusaurus Rex. My worries is that he'll fall off the radar. I mean, not hearing from him for quite some time, and I think he does that because he doesn't want to be a burden on people, which can be really sad, because you want to be there as a friend for him as well, but I think he's gotten to the stage now where you... He's felt like he's dig, dug himself into quite a big hole, and it's very hard to get out. I guess I'm not moving into something more permanent because my situation stops me moving into something more permanent. Um, I think. What people fail to comprehend in our sort of system is that when you have a bad credit rating because you've had an accident or an illness, uh, people don't care. Uh, they don't want to give you an apartment. They don't give you a house. I guess that's why I have an affinity to help some of the homeless friends I help with situations like this. It's why I gave so many of my friends my professional gallery address so they can get away from being homeless because sometimes it's as little as having an address to get a benefit to have a bank account. You can't get wins if you don't have an address. You can't have money if you don't have a bank account. Have you ever seen a rainbow's end? Did you find your part of gold? I can normally tell when I meet other head injury survivors, there's just something in their eyes. There's something in that vagueness. There's something in what people call my detached emotional state. A lot of people would say that I'm more of a child, that I don't necessarily possess adult emotions.
This painting is called uh, Flip Side, and so this is something that Flip Side was really supposed to show the juxtaposition in one person between the feminine side and the masculine side. And so some people conceptualize this image more about it being two different people pushed together in a relationship, which is also um, quite true. But I call it Flip Side because it's really supposed to sort of show the opposite side, that, that one entity can actually have a, a duality. Well, this is an artistic uh, uh, break. I, I like to take inspiration from, you know, the, the living and the dead. So that's one of mine. And of course, um, this, this is a Picasso. So of course, you know, sleeping with Picasso, that's, that's a natural thing to do. <laughs> no, this, this is actually just an interim break. Um, you guys have caught me uh, completely uh, exhausted after moving all my stuff into the hotel. Um, and this is just really taking five to think about how we're going to look and do everything probably next. It's always going to happen. Yeah, I suppose one of the things that people don't understand with having a head injury is that um, I actually go through um, quite a lot of pain. Um, I get phantom nerve pain all through my skull. Uh, it feels like there's a crack in my skull, even though there's not. I know I've seen the, the MRIs, but um, you get a lot of um, jaw pain, so I get a lot of pain all shooting down through my teeth and all through the side of my head. You can't have any quality of life if you don't actually just get used to that punamic drill in the back of your skull, or as I like to call them, the dancing elephants. I always call them um, head quakes and uh, dancing elephants. It's pretty much what it feels like. You've got some elephant kind of dancing in, uh, on the back of your eyeball. But to be honest, I'm extremely exhausted and fatigued. And as you can probably see, my eyeballs are starting to kind of like get to the gravity. It, 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 it's stronger than my will to keep them open. Sleeping off Picasso. I don't actually sleep anymore, so even if I were to close my eyes, I'm not actually getting restorative sleep, which is which is a, a, an unfortunate problem in terms of your fatigue levels. Those things are the little things, like friends of mine who, who, who joke about, oh man, I've got to go to my job, it so sucks. It's like, I'd love to go to a job, I'd love to be able to sleep. Those two things are, are priceless to me because they, they're just things I can't obtain. For love nor money, it's just an interesting, interesting ironic twist with brain injury. Um, if it, no one's familiar with what having a toddler in their life is, that's what I'm like. You, you get to that point that 50 times going shopping, yay, by the 51st, it's like, and the monster comes out and, you know, and not to say that's in a bad way, but it's just you, you, you react more agitated, more grumpy. You're, you're not as happy about something that may have made you happy 10 minutes ago, now making you very unhappy. And the ability to go from... Here at a zero with a head injury is, is, is quite, quite um, fast. <laughs> There's certain characteristics that Reese has had that Rex has that's developed in more of the extremity, shall we say. But I noticed the change quite dominantly take over after his accident. I didn't really know the much about the the bipolar or the mental illness side of Reese as well. He was always happy-go-lucky. Every time I saw him, he was always very upbeat. I think the head injuries made things a little bit more pronounced, but at the end of the day, uh, that's always been there, and the injury's probably a catalyst to justify the changes that he's made. Because I suppose to them they consider my behaviours or characteristics as being a choice, that or therein lies the if the issue. They they don't necessarily understand that that you know acting like a two-year-old child with a brain injury is actually a response caused by the brain injury. It's not necessarily a selfish narcissistic um, emotion that you've decided to cast upon the world because you've decided that acting like a two-year-old and making decisions like a three and a half-year-old is fundamentally good ways of surviving as a human. Bipolar, manic depression, I guess people always say those kind of things because they have a limited understanding of what they are and they're always a very nice label to cast upon someone else because I suppose it becomes easy to understand a label. 
But no, I've definitely had many, many tests done um, and I definitely don't have bipolar or manic depression because manic depression answers the question. You're manic and then you're depressed. I, I'm neither depressed. I'm very rarely depressed. So I'm manic all the time. So that means I can't be bipolar. There's no bi, <laughs> it's just polar. Wouldn't catch myself in one of my favorite places in Albert Park, which is in the middle of Auckland. Um, it's always an interesting time this time of day because everyone's in such a hurry. Um, they're always bustling off to get places, to do things. I kind of pity some of them because um, they're trapped into an existence which, to be honest, is very boring and mundane. And I, I don't remember it, but I see what they go through. I see the pain they go through every day to do these boring dentist jobs, to pay back their retarded student loans, to live with wives they hate, to have suits they hardly wear, cars they can't drive because they're always in their job. I get to sit here and enjoy nature and I get a lot more friends, I get a lot more exposure to the realities of life. I wouldn't say I wouldn't want a job. I would say I would like to be able to do what I should be able to do without a job. What I'd like to happen to Reese, um, yeah, I'd like for him to find happiness, and I think that he does find it in certain degrees, but it's not constant. I'd like some normality in his life, or what I think would be constructive for him, or just having some sort of structure as well, but there would be some changes required for him to do that, and he's aware that that needs to happen as well. Um, I think the challenge is for both of us figuring out how that's going to work. Come on. Come on. People perceive that I have a sense of freedom or a sense of being myself that other people can't have. I suppose I don't choose to listen to this. I suppose if I want to do something, I do it. And maybe people say, oh, that's because I'm a rebel artist or because I've got some inner broken um, brain problem. Um, but I actually look at it as being a, a freedom. I free myself from those restrictions. Probably what makes me most proud is that Rex didn't just give in. He just didn't give up. He hashtag I can't accept not trying. He just kept trying. I suppose, like Michael Jordan, no one sees the thousands of times I, try, I, I tried and failed. I'm not saying I'm not in the real world. I think I'm fortunate that I've created a free existence as an artist and an activist that allows me to dictate my real world. But I think that took a lot of deliberate manipulation and a lot of deliberate hard effort. Is this a veneer? Can you tell me about that? Like you is said this in the a veneer? Um, no, I think this is, to be honest, the way that we've shot this has been pretty much serendipitously how my life plays out. I, I have one of these lives. Um, I can't say that too much of it is an act more than you are when you get up and dress yourself every morning. You're always putting on your best you. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.